morning. Welcome today. We'd like to begin with a moment of prayer. If you would join us as we pray together. Father, today as we gather in this place of worship, it is a privilege to be able to sing together, to share together, and to worship together. Even though we are in different facilities at home or wherever we may be, we know the spirit of the Lord is there. So we ask you today to come and fill our lives, fill our spirits, uh, speak to us through the songs that are sung, through the words that are spoken. And Lord, give us a, a testimony to the world around us of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And for all that you do for us today and through this time of worship, we celebrate that. We give you thanks. Be with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It is good to welcome you again this morning as we gather by our, our uh, video production and try to get the gospel of Christ out to you and to your family. Uh, we're glad that you're joining us today. Uh, as far as announcements begin, just a word. We are preaching from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. So if you'd like to take your Bible, go ahead and find that. Uh, you'll be ready when we begin in just a few moments, but uh, just know that that will be our text. A couple of quick announcements for you. These flowers that are here to my right, uh, they are here to commemorate the arrival of our newest church member, uh, Brian Curtis Howell III, uh, born to Curtis and Courtney Howell on the 7th of this month. So we extend our congratulations to them and encourage you to be in prayer for them as they begin this next chapter in their life. Um, one big announcement that most of you have been waiting for and we've been working through trying to plan and promote. Uh, everybody wants to know, when are we going to be back in church? When can we worship together? Well, uh, staff had a meeting today and we talked about a lot of issues. And uh, we have tentatively scheduled our reopening service for uh, the 17th of May. Uh, since our governor extended the stay-in-place order this past week, uh, we want to try to uh, be obedient to that if we can. And so we were... Uh, looking for and planning the first service to be May 17th. Uh, just understand, if you will, there will be no Sunday school, no nursery, no children's church. Uh, we will continue to practice social distancing even here in the sanctuary. And so we will invite you to come with your family and to sit together on your pew. Uh, we are, are going to ask that if you're not immediate family, we're going to try to spread you out. And so you may not get your normal seat, uh, but we hope that you will be able to join with us in those endeavors and uh, we look for things to begin moving forward very quickly. Um, we will continue to have our services live for you on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, that way, if you are uncomfortable or not sure about coming out into a crowd, uh, if you would rather worship at home for another week or two, we do understand that. We invite you to join us. Uh, some of you have asked about masks, and that is perfectly fine. If you feel more comfortable wearing a mask during our service, uh, we encourage you to do that. It is not required, so... I don't feel like you have to, but that is options that we have for you. Um, we will uh, try to get information to you with a little more detail in it out via email or maybe through our Realm program, just so you know what we're doing. But we do want to keep you up to date and let you know where we are and what we're planning. So again, we're glad you're with us this morning. Uh, call a friend, call your family members, invite them to join us as we proceed with the worship today. And it is our prayer that God will use these moments to bring encouragement to your life and hope to your spirit. Thank you. 
their chains were fastened tight down at the jail that night still Paul and Silas would not be dismayed they said it's time to lift our voice sing praises to the Lord let's prove that we will trust him come what may God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstance is as hopeless as can be. That's when God wants to hear you sing. He loves to hear our praise on our cheerful days when the pleasant times outweigh the bad by far. But when suffering comes along and we still sing him songs, that is when we bless the Father's heart. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing around you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. says your circumstance is as hopeless as can be that's when god wants to hear you sing god wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you when the fiery darts surround you when this fair is all Thank you, Garrett. I do appreciate the music you shared with us this morning. Uh, if you have your Bible and you will read along with us, we are in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, beginning our reading in the third verse. The Apostle Peter writes this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
This morning I'm going to share with you a message that I've entitled, Don't Get Rained Out. And the title kind of comes from an experience that I had back on October the 3rd of 2015. I realized on that day that I had much more stamina and much less brains than I had known. I was uh, visiting down in Clemson University, my wife and uh, several friends from the church had gone along to the ball game there, and uh, Clemson was playing Notre Dame. It was arguably one of the best football games that I've ever attended. Clemson was ranked number 12 in the nation. Notre Dame was number six. There was only one problem with the entire day, and that was rain. And boy, did it rain. It rained before the game. It rained after the game. It rained during the game. I was dressed for all that that I had listened to the weather forecast, and I knew it was not going to be a great day, and so I had on several layers of clothing. I had on sweatshirts and shirts and then a raincoat and hats and uh, even wore my waterproof boots just in case. By the end of the game, I could literally pour the water out of my shoes. We were soaked from head to toe. Now, here's what I remember about that game that kind of made it interesting to me. Because of the forecast of rain and the amount of rain that was forecast to fall, there were some people that didn't even show up. There were other people that because of the rain, they, they came, but they never went inside the stadium. Still others came, they went inside the stadium, they watched a little bit of the game, but because the rains were just torrential, those people got up and left very early. But for the most part, there were close to 80,000 of us that stayed and toughed it out and stayed in our seats and endured the weather. And even though there were times that we could barely even see the field, we were determined that the storm was not going to get the best of us. We outlasted that storm. And we got to cheer on our Tigers to a, a very impressive win over Notre Dame. Now, I share that with you not to promote Clemson or any of that kind of thing but, thing, but I want you to know that in all of our lives, at different times, you're going to find yourself in a very similar situation. There will be storms. There will be things that you didn't cause and things that you can't control and things that you can't avoid that are going to come into your life. And all you can do is either pack your bags and go home or you can pray and wait for the storm to end. First Peter was written for people in that predicament. In the sixth verse that we read together a moment ago, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. The word various literally means multicolored. Or some translations say that you are grieved by all kinds of trials. The word trial means simply an adversity or a setback or a problem or an event in your life. And Peter is not telling us here that just during those major things, just during persecution or, persecution or the threat of death or any of those things, he talks here about everyday things that happen in your life. Health problems, money problems, family problems, work problems, personal problems, those things that you face that are completely out of your control. You may remember that Jesus on one occasion told a story about two men. They were both building houses. In the story, one of them he calls wise and the other he refers to as foolish. They build their house. One builds on rock, one builds on sand. And if you remember one stands and one falls. But I want you to, to think about for just a moment, what did those two men have in common? The common thread in the story is both of them had storms. A storm came to the man that was prepared and built his house wisely and to the man that built his house on sand that was not on a firm foundation. They were both challenged. And the things that they had built their life on were put at risk. And so the question for us this morning is, how do we hold on and what do we do to outlast the storm? 
how do we keep from getting rained out? Peter offers us some help and some hope to hold on during the toughest times of our lives. And here's what he tells us. In verse 6, he began by saying this, your problems are temporary. The verse says, for a little while, you have been grieved for a little while. Basically, I interpret that to mean the storm. And whatever variety of storm it is that comes into your life, the storm will not last forever. Peter began this chapter with these words, and here's what he said. In verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion. What are pilgrims? Pilgrims are people that are moving from one place to another. And so from that, we kind of get the idea that what he was saying is, don't get too attached to this world. Don't get too attached to the, the pleasures of this world. Don't get too attached to the problems of this world. You know, you can spend your life focused on all the stuff that you don't have and all the things that are not working and how unfair life has been, or you can see the benefit of God and the blessing of God through the daily struggles of your life. Peter says to us here, we're just passing through. There's an old hymn that we used to sing in church a lot that said those words, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My home is far away, somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's distant shore, and I cannot feel at home in this world anymore. Our problems, our setbacks, our trials, they are temporary. Someone wrote once that there are, it's a two-step formula for dealing with problems. The first step is this, you need to understand that you don't need to sweat the small stuff. And the second principle is this, in light of eternity, everything that we face here is small stuff. Let me give you an example of that. I have in my pocket a quarter. You probably can't see it very well from where you are, but I promise that's a quarter. Do you realize that if you hold that quarter close enough to your eye, that it can cover up the sun in the sky? If you just get it in exactly the right place, depending on where you hold it, you can cover completely the sun. The same thing is true with the problems in your life. If you focus on your problems, if you look too closely at them, you lose your perspective. And your problems seem bigger than they really are. Kind of reminds me of the story of a man who woke up one morning and he had picked up a bad cold and was feeling terrible. And so he told his wife that he was going to the doctor. And he goes to the doctor and sits down in the doctor's office and he begins to tell him all of his symptoms. My nose is running and I'm coughing and I'm sneezing and I have a fever and I'm achy all over and I need something done. And the doctor said, well, I'm sorry, but we don't have a cure for the cold. So go home, drink plenty of water, take a couple of aspirin, get some rest, and in a couple of days you're going to feel better. Well, the man didn't like the, the diagnosis the doctor gave him, and he went home and sort of bemoaned to his wife the fact that I'm just going to have to live with this for a few days. And he took the aspirin, he drank the water, he went to bed, got some sleep, and he woke up the next morning, and he felt worse. And so he got up, and he walked into the kitchen where his wife was, and he said, I'm going to go outside and take a long walk. And his wife said, don't be stupid. It, it's cold outside, and the snow is falling if you're going to go out, at least put on a coat and your hat and some shoes. If you don't, you're going to catch pneumonia. And the man looked and he smiled at his wife and he said, well, I hope so. Doctor knows how to cure pneumonia, but they can't cure this cold. Now, if you think about the biggest problem that you're facing right now, as you think about it, remind yourself, this won't last forever. You can sit through the heaviest of rain or the darkest of storms if you know that there is an end that's coming. That's what Peter says. For a little while you have been grieved by various trials. They are temporary. They will pass. 
The grief will subside. The anger will disappear. God will move in your life. Eventually, things will work out. There will be a time in your life that you can look back on whatever your experience is tonight or, or today, and you can know that God brought you through that, and all the stuff you worried so much about will seem kind of petty in retrospect. Storms never last forever. Number two, in that same verse, in verse 6, as Paul talked about the various trials, he said, in this you greatly rejoice. And so I take that as my second point, and here's what I say to you. Trials don't last forever, but rejoice anyway during the trial. Well, the question might be posed, what do I have to rejoice over? Especially walking through the trials of my life, well, here's what Peter tells us, verses we didn't read, verse 3 through 5. He kind of makes a list for people that are reading his letter, and he says, this is what God has given us. We have received his mercy. We have been given new birth and new life. We have hope. We don't have to be afraid of death because Jesus already conquered that. We have an eternal inheritance that can never be destroyed. We are protected. We are kept by the power of God until the end of time. Now, if all of those things are true, and they are, how can we allow the temporary problems of life to steal away the joy and the happiness that God has given us? Abraham Lincoln said, a person is as happy as he makes up his mind to be. Now, I'm not saying to make light of your struggle or that struggles aren't hard or that you ought to welcome them and enjoy them in your life. What I'm saying is this, that even though we all struggle and suffer and have grief and pain, we have every reason to be confident, to be hopeful, to rejoice. As Gary sang in the song a moment ago, sing in your storm when things are terrible and bad and dark and gloomy, you have a reason to sing. Because you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you remember that, then there is no problem that has the power to take away the joy of your life. Number three, because of your struggle, you will be stronger. I remember when my children were small, they would come sometimes into where I was sitting and they would would say something like this to me, my, my legs hurt, my arms hurt. I kind of smile at them and say, oh, it's okay, you're, you're doing all right, nothing wrong with you, you're just experiencing growing pains. They never lasted very long, sometimes overnight, sometimes uh, just in an hour or two or until something else crossed their mind and they were invested in that. The point is, sometimes growing is painful. Athletes have a slogan. No pain, no gain. Every struggle, every temptation serves to make you a little stronger. Here's what Peter said in verse 7 of our text. Those trials come that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So during the struggle, during the storm, I encourage you to remember two things. First, you can overcome. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And folks, I believe that that is probably one of the most misquoted and misunderstood verses in all the Bible. A lot of people take that and say, well, you know, you just be strong. God's not going to put more on you than you can bear. During a television show entitled 30-something, one of the characters in the show, her mom got sick and died. And the priest had come to kind of talk with and minister to the family. And while he was there, he quoted that verse of Scripture. God will not put more on you than you can bear. The character in the story responded to him, well, does that mean that if I were a weaker person, my mother would still be alive? That's not what the verse means. It doesn't mean that God gives you problems to match 
your strength. What it means is simply this. God gives you strength to match your problems. His strength is available anytime you need it. One passage of scripture says that the things that happened to you, Satan meant it for your harm, for your struggle. He meant to destroy you with it, but God intended to use it for your good. If you go back in the Old Testament, remember the story of Joseph been sold by his brothers into slavery and he gets down to Egypt and in Egypt he's thrown into prison and he's finally let out of prison after a period of time and he goes and he serves in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife makes an accusation that he has been inappropriate in his dealings with her. He is thrown back into prison again for a number of years and he's got to be thinking to himself, where's God? God, why is all this stuff happening? Why haven't you done something? Why haven't you fixed this? Why am I back in this same place? What was God doing? God was using those painful years to eventually place him second in command over all of Egypt. About 2,000 years later, the apostle Paul finds himself in prison. His crime, nothing more than preaching the gospel of Christ. You and I would look at that and we think, you know, God is supposed to protect his children and we aren't supposed to go through these great trials and mysteries of life paul's got to be saying god i'm here at your request that you're calling you sent me i've done what you asked me to do why i'm in prison god where are you what was god doing while paul sits in prison we don't know exactly how long he was there but while he's in prison he's preaching to the roman guards and many of them come to faith in christ while he's sitting in prison he has time to write some letters of hope and encouragement to several churches that you and I are still reading today and finding encouragement from them. Hence, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 5 says, The Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing because the Lord your God loves you. It would be foolish for me today to ask, are you fighting some battle? Is there some kind of storm taking place in your life right now and everything isn't working out right or like you hoped or like you planned? Sure it is. We all have those experiences. And for some of you today, it may feel like the storm is just too strong and you're never going to be able to weather it. My word to you today is don't get rained out. Whether you cause the storm or if it's something that was beyond your control, remember, God loves you. And the rain never diminishes the love he has for you. Problem is temporary. Rejoice anyway. What Satan meant for harm, God means to use to make you stronger. Put your faith in him. Put your hope in him. The storm will end. When it does, Jesus will still be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. During the storm, he will be your strength. Rejoice in his love and grow in his grace. Storms don't last forever. Most of us have been sitting around during this viral shut-in that we have been experiencing, and it just seems like it never ends. I, I know we, we talked about it a little earlier, but the month of April must have had 95 days in it. That's the longest month I've ever been a part of. And I kept asking, is this ever going to end? Well, here we are in this month, and we're struggling, and we're, is it ever going to, are we ever going to get out of our house? Are we ever going to get to go out and eat Mexican food again? By the way, if you see me out at a Mexican restaurant when this thing is over and you see me with a straw stuck in my bowl of quesadilla, don't you say a word. You don't know where I've been, and I'm just trying to make up for lost time. Is the storm going to end? Yeah, it's going to end. What are you going to do during the storm? I was reading this week of a, a ministry, and I don't remember the name of the ministry, but the gentleman reported that he knows there are confirmed 117,000 people during this coronavirus scare that have given their life to Christ just in his ministry. This storm is going to end. And folks, God has given us the chance to be the church 
in sickness and in health. To let the world see that we have a hope that isn't diminished just because it rains. That our faith in God isn't destroyed simply because we don't understand why this happened or when it's going to be over. What we know is that when it all ends, we serve a God who is faithful, a God who is able, and a God who is present. Some of you over these days have felt so alone. You're isolated. You're Maybe you're single or maybe you're a, a widow or a widow, widower and you're thinking, man, it's just nobody ever comes. I am so alone. If you're a child of God, I would remind you, you are never alone. He is always with you. So offer your song of praise. In the midst of the storm, don't get rained out. Joy. Father, I thank you today for the privilege of reading your word and for the confidence and the courage and the hope that it provides. We are all fighting our various battles and trying to see your hand and trying to see your face and trying to be obedient. And sometimes it just appears to us that the storm is too big. It's too strong. But God, we are confident that your word taught us that there is nothing that can separate us from you. Your love is constant. And so, Lord, today, as we prepare to face life and whatever challenges there may be in the days that lay ahead, may we face them with that assurance that you are a very present help in times of trouble. And, Lord, today there may be individuals watching this service that have never placed their faith and their hope and their trust in you. It is our prayer as a church family that somehow the words and the songs that have been shared this morning will cause them to be curious and that they will pause in the busyness of their life. They'll confess their sin and ask you to come into their life and be their Lord and their Savior. And Lord, through this process and all that you do, we give you thanks. We offer you our praise. Bless us today, we ask in Jesus' name.